Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. First off, before I get into today's video, I wanted to give a huge, huge thank you to all of my subscribers. February 10th, I reached a thousand subscribers and I was floored. I mean, it, it's such a huge milestone. There's so much hard work that goes into creating content for a YouTube video. I put a lot of work and energy into my channel, creating the content, doing the editing. I Honestly, I'm still learning. I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but I'm learning and I'm grateful for that process and the journey that's come with it. There's been a lot of highs and lows behind the scenes, but at the end of the day, this is something that I put all of my energy into and to see the return on that, it's incredible. It's an incredible, incredible feeling and I can't thank you guys enough for being there and supporting. So just wanted to take a moment to thank you all because honestly, I couldn't have done it without you. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. So if you are watching this video and you have seen my Temu haul, which if you haven't, I will put a card here to link that video and I will also add it into the description. But basically that was a crafting haul or art supply haul from Temu. And in that video, I had hauled these specific watercolor sets. And in that video, I had mentioned that the packaging, just looking at the packaging alone, not testing the quality or anything like that, it looked eerily similar to that of the Prima Marketing Ink, which retails anywhere from 20 to $25, $26, depending on which retailer you go through, whether Amazon, Michaels, Joann's, so on and so forth. So I got some request to actually put the watercolors to the test. I went into my stash of Prima Marketing Ink. I have several palettes and I pulled ones that I thought looked similar, not sure if they're identical, that's what this video is for, to see if they are identical or pretty darn similar matches to the Prima. Starting off with the watercolor sets from Temu. These are all by the brand Simi Art and they come in four different colorways. So I purchased all four. So I got the Mirandi, the Skin, the Candy, and the Ocean in the Forest. Now the ones that I will be comparing it to, so for the Mirandi, it's a very muted, kind of gray-based uh, watercolor set. Mirandi is named after an Italian painter, Giorgio Mirandi, and his palettes were very neutral, and it almost looked like you did a wash of gray over the bright colors, which is what this looks like. It's a very muted pastel color, color palette. So I thought that looked very similar to the Vintage Pastels from Prima. The next one is called Skin, and that's what that looks like on the back. And I thought it looked similar to the Complexion Prima set. The next one is called Candy. So this is your very bright colors, which I thought looked similar to the Pastel Dreams. And then the very last one is called Ocean and Forest, which as you can imagine has a lot of the blues and the greens, which I thought looked very similar to the Currents palette. Let's go ahead and dive into the compare and contrast part of the palettes. All right, so I have all of them unpackaged and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on one pair because essentially all of these, aside from the colors that are inside, are pretty much the same interior wise and exterior wise. So I just think it makes more sense to just focus on one pair because it's pretty much the same for the rest. And then we'll get into the color selection. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the obvious thing is these are metal palettes. They're metal palettes. They feel very sturdy. When you open both of them up, they have a fold out panel here. And essentially you have two mixing areas. So you have two wells here on the top and then four wells at the bottom here. And that's where you can mix your, if you have to mix any of the colors, you can do so on either side. So both of these palettes are very sturdy. They have really nice weight to them. They can be reusable as well. So if you do run out of a color, you can always refill it with, a, with another cake. They are very easy to clean. Now in terms of the dimensions, the package dimensions of the palette itself, they both come in with the same measurements. So in terms of the length, we're looking at four and three quarters with two and three quarters width and then one inch for the height. You do get the same amount of cakes. So you do get 12 cakes. The only slight difference between the cakes is that as you can see here on the Temu side, these are unwrapped and they are unnumbered. 
they do not have a number on them. Whereas with the Prima, all of them are numbered. Each color is numbered. And then when you take off the wrapping, you can see that the number matches what's on the wrapper. So that way, if you want to go ahead and refill this cake, you can just look up the number online and you'll be able to find it if you can't remember what the name is. And then the very last similarity is that both of these trays are removable. So very, very easy to insert back in and very easy to take out. That's it as far as the similarities go. Now we're gonna go into the differences. So starting off with some weight of the tins, I want it to be as accurate as possible. So I did on Amazon purchase this really inexpensive, I think it was $13 way, um, just so I can keep track of the grams and the pounds and whatnot. Some of you may want that information, some of you may not care, and that's really okay. I wanted to do my homework and make sure that I provide every little piece of information about the palette so that you can make your own decision at the end of the day. With that being said, I did go ahead and weigh the tin only, so I took out the inner tray, removed that, and I weighed the tin by itself, and that came in at about 67 grams for the Prima and 78 grams for the Simi one, the Temu one. Now, that's kind of interesting because, like I said, they look exactly the same, but this one has a little bit more weight to it than the Prima one does. The other thing that I did was I measured the entire tin with the cakes on the inside with the tray. So the Prima came out to 150 grams. The Simi came out to 168 grams. So again, a little bit more weight on this side. The next weight that I did was the weight of the cakes on the inside tray. The Prima came out to 83 grams. The weight of the Temu one was 89 grams. I then went ahead and weighed out the cakes themselves. Um, and each cake for the Prima actually came out to 4.25 grams. The weight of the Temu ones came out to four and a half grams. So you get a little bit more product on this side, just a quarter more, but that's still a quarter more. So that's definitely a plus for the Temu side. Now in terms of the refills, so if you run out of refills, so once you've used your watercolors and you're down to the very last little bit in your cake pot, I did realize that on Temu, there's really no refills that you can get for these specific colors. But for Prima, they are available. Like I said, they go by number. So in terms of the cake refills for the Prima side, they are available from select sellers like on Amazon, but not all the colors are available that I can find. So that's kind of a downside because if you do run out, it may not be easily replaceable. You may have to purchase a brand new palette. Um, same with the Temu one you would have to purchase a brand new palette if it still exists and isn't discontinued because products on Temu do become discontinued after a certain period and then they get replaced with similar items, maybe not the exact one. So also keep that in mind that it's a constant fluctuation with inventory on Temu. The other difference that I noticed, and thank you to those of you who pointed this out because in the Temu video, I had no idea what this was for. I thought it was like a kickstand, and after testing it out, it is not a kickstand, and many of you had mentioned that it is a thumb ring, which makes so much more sense, so I really appreciate the um, clarification there for me. But this is a thumb ring, whether you use it or not, it's there. This is smaller on the Temu side, and then the ring on the Prima side is much larger. In terms of country of origin, the Prima Marketing Inc. is made in South Korea. And then if you can guess it, the Temu one is made in China. Now moving along into the swatch cards that are included. Now this one is obviously from the Temu watercolor set. This one's from Prima. What is the very big difference between both of these? You guessed it. This one has no information on it. This one has not only the colors, the number that correspond to each cake, as well as which palette this is from. So if this gets lost out of your palette and you're like, I don't know which one this goes to, you have a reference here. With this one, you kind of have to DIY it a little bit. So I would recommend that if you do get the Temu palette, that you go ahead and just number each of your cakes. You write the numbers that correspond to that cake along with the corresponding watercolor swatch. So the biggest difference with Temu um, that I noticed in all four of the sets that I got was two of them came with a card just like this, completely blank, so you basically have to DIY it yourself, and then the other two came with 
a card that has all the names printed on it. So I'm not sure if it's going to be the same for you if you order the same skin set, if you're going to get a swatch card that has all the names printed, or if you order the same candy set and you get one that is completely blank. I'm not exactly sure. The other two, just so that you're aware, this one is the Morandi set. This one came blank. The Oceans and Forest set came with the names on it. So again, I'm not sure if it's just those two, the Oceans and the Forest set and the skin set that have the names printed and the candy and the Morandi that don't, or if it's just a toss up and you get what you get when you order, which sometimes can be the case from Temu. There can be some inconsistencies in the products that you receive, so keep that in mind as well. And then also in terms of the paper, so as you can see, this one has a little bit more texture to it. This one also has texture, but it's different. As you can see, this one kind of has some ridges and this one doesn't. These are just little small details that I'm picking out for you, but I just want you all to have the most information that you possibly can when you are ordering. So now that we've discussed the similarities and the differences between all of the palettes, let's go ahead and start swatching them. So the first set of swatches that I'm going to be doing is the Morandi watercolor Temu set and then the vintage pastels from Prima, which I think look very similar in color tone anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the swatch card from both. Now for the sake of time for this video, I'm not going to go ahead and number these for right now, but I definitely recommend you number them if you get this palette. The Temu one, I don't really have anything that I need to do. It's all pretty much done for me in terms of being able to use the palette right away. For the Prima, I do have to, have to take the time to unwrap all of these. So I'm just going to do that real quickly and then come back. So these wrappers, I'm not going to throw out. I threw the plastic away, um, but I will just keep these in a Ziploc bag until I can figure out how I want to use them. If you have any ideas off the top of your head, what you use these for, if you do have palettes that come with wrappers like this, just feel free to let me know in the comments down below. So in terms of my setup here, I have my two palettes. I have my swatch cards. I have two containers of water. As you can see, I added some marbles at the bottom of both of them. And I actually found that this was like a trick that you could use to make sure that you're getting the pigment off of your um, brushes. So that's really cool. I've never tried that. So I'm going to try that out today. Just for consistency measures, I am using two of the same brushes. And then the very last thing, a spray bottle of water so that you can wet your paints. You can drip water into your paints, I've seen it done several different ways, whatever's gonna be easier for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these babies wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet my brush and I'm gonna go in with this first color here. And I'm just gonna make sure I pick up some of that pigmentation. And then hopefully you can see this. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it to the card. So that is what that first color looks like. It's pretty muted, actually. It's very muted. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and let that dry. Next color is going to be this kind of cotton candy pink. So that's what that color looks like. Very, very muted palette. I think this one's my favorite. It's kind of like a pistachio green color. Really pretty. If 
That one's very pigmented. Last one is probably going to be pretty self-explanatory. It's just a black. Here is the swatch card for the Mirandi set from Temu. Really pretty colors, I have to say. Um, some of them swatched a little bit better than others. And again, with the Mirandi set, it's not meant to be a bright color palette. It is fashioned to be a palette that looks like it has a gray overtone on top. But I think it's very pretty. I'm very impressed with how the colors look, and I apologize for the bleeding there. I added a little bit too much water, but that's okay. Some bleeding is nice. Um, but you don't want bleeding on your swatch card because then it muddies up your actual swatches. So don't do what I did and add too much water um, so that it bleeds. But I really like the way the colors are drying. Now know that with watercolors that as it dries, it will lighten. So layers are very important in the art of watercoloring. I am learning that myself. I am still a beginner when it comes to watercolor, but this is just what I am noticing that as the colors dry, are going to be a lot lighter than what they look like when they're wet. So that is a swatch card for the Mirandi set. I'm just going to place that aside so it can dry a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to play with the Prima one to see what those colors look like. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the beginning here, which is the 109. And I have to say the marbles actually really help with getting the pigment off of your brush. I just added marbles that I got from Dollar Tree. It just came in a bag with a bunch of them. And I just added this right into the jar of water. So using marbles in your jar is definitely a win. So I'm gonna go in with this periwinkle color. Really pretty. Ooh, that's nice. Next color is called Sage. It's really pretty too. Next color is called Golden Glow. Almost like a buttery butterscotch color. Next color is Terracotta. Oh, these colors are yummy. Let's go in with Suede. Yeah, these are just buttery. This one is called Stone Gray. This one is called Breezy. I like the name of that. Hmm. It's like a duck egg blue. This one is called Soft Lilac. And the pigmentation is really nice. This one's charcoal, so as you can imagine by that name, it's gonna be pretty dark, closer to black. Next one is Dark Rose, which I've always been so in love with these mauve tones, dusty rose tones. Ooh, that's nice too. Okay, next one is called Apple Blossom. And then the very last one is called Dusky Mauve. All right, so this is the swatch card for Vintage Pastels. And I'm just gonna bring Morandi back into the picture. Not exact, but kind of in the same color family for a lot of these. And again, this one kind of swatched a little weird just because I feel like the texture on the card is not helping whereas this one's very very smooth texture curious to know how this is going to swatch do i even have a smooth watercolor paper let me check so i wanted to give this a fair chance against the temu and as you can see i yeah it's kind of splotchy um with the Prima one, you really, it just picks up a lot of pigmentation right off the bat. So you almost need to water down your colors just a little bit because as you can see, just super pigmented colors 
right off the bat. Whereas with the Temu one, fortunately, there's not a lot of color payoff. Uh, kind of splotchy, not a lot of colors showing up. So, so for the sake of this battle between the Morandi and the Vintage Pastels, I'm going to give it to the Vintage Pastels by Prima. Way better payoff um, in the long run. Definitely similar color selection here. So the colors are comparable to each other, but the intensity and color payoff is just not there for me to say go with Temu. So on to the next one. All right, so the next one we're gonna dive into is the Pastel Dreams versus the Candy. And I went ahead and got brand new water. I'm going to unwrap all of these cakes again. I'm gonna go ahead and spray my watercolors. And last time I started off with the Temu, I'm gonna start off with Prima this time and see how that swatches. I'm gonna go into my water and this is going to be the color brown. Okay. This one is the color chocolate. Kind of looks like a milk chocolate. The next color is crimson. Which when I think of crimson, I think of red, but this one's kind of like a watermelon pink. The next color is rose. Next is, is that right? Lemonade? Let me see. 41, yeah, it's called lemonade. Maybe a pink lemonade? <laughs> I don't know how that's lemonade, but okay. All right. Yeah, I would say like a pink lemonade. This one is citrus. This one is called bumblebee. Ooh, yeah, that is bright. Next one is called sea dream. This one's a little lighter in hue. Next is Paradise. Ooh, I love that. It's like a seafoam green. Next is Pool Party. Beautiful. Next is Icy Sky, which looks like it has a little bit of lavender, almost like a periwinkle, a light periwinkle color, which I love. And then the very last one, I love the name Lilac Rain, almost like Purple Rain, but Lilac Rain. Ooh, that's beautiful. This palette, I think, is a beautiful summer palette. Just look at those colors, nice and bright. So this is called Pastel Dreams, but there's really nothing pastel to me about this palette. This just kind of screams summer to me, but that's just me. <laughs> All right, so that is Pastel Dreams by Prima, really nicely done Prima. I'm I'm impressed. Let's go in with the Temu. This is called the Candy Watercolor Set. So we're going to start off with this yellow color here. All of these colors in this palette look very promising, so I'm fingers crossed. Ooh. Ooh, that is nice. Now we're looking at this orange color. Oh. Oh wow. I'm having a moment. Um now we're gonna look at this pink one. Wow, very nice, very nice. That one I would call pink lemonade. This one kind of reminds me of the rose, just kind of looking at it in the pan, and it's pretty much swatching like the rose did. Next is this color, which I'm gonna say looks like the crimson color in the Prima. Ooh, wow, that is spot on. I love colors. I love paints and painting and I just love colors and I love the names of colors. Oh, that is nice. This is going to be a tie for me, I feel. All right. This one looks like it could be comparable to Icy Sky. Oh, yeah. This one looks like it could be Pool Party. Oh, yeah. This one looks like it could be comparable to Sea Dream. Not quite. It has a little bit more blue than the Sea Dream has. So the Sea Dream looks like a minty green. This one has a touch more blue, um, almost like um, a robin's egg blue. This next color looks like it could be comparable to the Paradise color here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
spot on there. And then the last two, this one, this one looks like it's comparable to the brown. And the very last brown on here, ooh, looks like it could be the chocolate. Uh, yep, it looks like the milk chocolate. So, which one? I, I have to say, either one. I mean, the, this, this looks pretty much like a dupe to me. With the exception of Sea Dream, which, let me bring this closer. Sea Dream, uh, this is the color that was in this palette, this one right here, which I thought, just looking at it, would look similar to this one here, but it's not. This one is called Sea Dream, and as you can see, this one's a little bit more minty versus the other one. I mean, on camera it looks pretty similar, but this one, it definitely has a lot more blue hue in it than the Sea Dream does, which has a little, leans more minty. But wow, um, honestly, either one. Both of these are great. So whether you go with the Temu one, whether you go with Prima, they both swatched like a dream. And the color payoff is chef's kiss. Oh my gosh, I, I'm in love. All right, on to the next one. Next in line, we have Skin from Temu versus the Prima Complexion. So like the other two Primas, I've got some stuff to do. <laughs> I've got to unwrap all of these, so I will be right back. I almost feel like I'm unwrapping little candies, which is making me crave a little sucker. But that's bad, Lindsay, that's really bad. All right, so I just went ahead and got some fresh water. This is Skin. This is complexion, this is the Prima, this is the Temu. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go into the Temu one first. So this one is actually, the swatch card is named, it has the names on there, which is cool, I love that. So here's the black. Next one is Yellow Ochre. Ooh, that one's nice too. Next one is Van Dyke Brown. Ooh, that's nice too. Next one is called Cinnamon, which, um, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I feel like that's off. I feel like that would be Flesh Pink, which is the next one. Um, so that might be off, but oh well. All right. So this one is Flesh Pink. This one is called Gold, which I don't know about gold. It's definitely yellow. This one is caramel, caramel, caramel. How do you guys say it? That does not look like, it, it's interesting because in the pan, it looks like caramel or caramel, tomato, tomato. Um, but swatched, it, what do you guys think? I'm not convinced that's a color match. Next is dark brown. That one's nice. Next color is redwood which almost looks like it has a um, red tone in there. Yeah, redwood. The next one is burnt ochre. I don't know about that one either. That looks like peacock. So we're gonna name it peacock. This is called raw ochre. Last one is raw umber. Beautiful colors. I don't like the gold because it's like a neon yellow, um, but beautiful nonetheless. I'll just leave it at that. All right, the next one that we're going to do is the Prima, which I am super excited about because if you can see this gold has, it's it looks almost metallic. So I am just eager to know what that one looks like. So let's start off with the first color, which is black, which should swatch pretty well. Next one is called coconut. Okay. The next color is Tiki. Okay. Peach Cobbler is this one. Next one is Lemonade. Okay. Next is Gold, which looks really pretty in the pan. Um, yeah, it definitely has some metallic qualities in there. Really pretty. Next one is Cavern. Next one is called Bear. 
Next one is Redwood. Really pretty. Next is called Chant. Next is Namaste. Let me make sure I'm in shot here. There we go. Um, and then the very last one is called Unite, which I like. Looking at both of these, the colors are beautiful with the exception of the gold, what they call burnt ochre, which that blue just doesn't fit in this color palette that's labeled skin. So I, I don't know about that one. That could be a mishap. I'm not really sure, but that just doesn't go. And this gold one just doesn't go either. But other than that, the colors, like I mentioned, are beautiful. In terms of the complexion palette from Prima, I love it. There are very similar color tones here. Um, almost repetitive in a way. I feel like the coconut and the namaste is very similar. Um, the namaste is just a little bit brighter. Uh, this is just a darker version of peach cobbler, I feel. But I think overall it's a beautiful palette to have some really good um, browns and peachy colors if you're looking for that to incorporate that into your watercolor paintings. They're both beautiful. I think it's going to have to boil down to color variation. I feel like there's more vari variation of color with the Temu one versus this one. Uh, there's a lot of similarities in the color tones that are in this palette. So I feel like in terms of variety, I would go with Temu, but both of them are beautiful and swatched beautifully. As you can see the color swatches here, they are very nice and opaque. Um, so yeah, just kind of depends on what you're looking for, but I love them both in their own right. The last and final set that I'm going to review is the Currents by Prima versus the Oceans and Forest by Temu. And Oceans and the Forest one does have the card that is labeled, so we don't have to worry about that. And then of course we have the swatch card from Prima. And then of course the lovely cakes that I have to unwrap. With the magic of TV, these are going to be magically unwrapped. So as always, I have some fresh water. I'm gonna spritz my little watercolors here. Let's go ahead and start swatching. The first color is called Seaside, which looks like a beautiful blue. Ooh, wow, that is a beautiful blue. Next color is Blue Whale. Ooh, that is scrumptious. This one's called Ocean. That's beautiful. The next one is called Turkish Sea, which sounds beautiful. And wow, this color, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Jellyfish is this one, which looks like a beautiful bright cobalt. Oh, wow. Oh, that's electric blue. Caribbean Sea. Oh my God, the blues in this palette. This one's kind of, Caribbean Sea is just a little bit darker than Turkish Sea. I would say that this is almost like a forest green. Uh, kelp looks to be like a Kelly green. Ooh, it's kind of brighter than that actually. It looks almost like a shamrock. Ireland green. Um, <laughs> next one is seagrass. Okay, very similar in color family to Turkish Sea and Caribbean Sea. So I feel like if Turkish Sea and Caribbean Sea had a baby, it would be seagrass. Uh, next one is called Sea Green. That one looks more Kelly Green to me. That's pretty. Next one is Algae, which looks like an olive color, a little bit brighter than an olive, olive with a little bit of yellow to it. Deep sea is the very next one. Your typical dark blue. Last one is called blue fin. Oh, wow. Oof. Wow. Um, I don't know if it's translating on, to ca on camera, but in person, I am just, those are beautiful colors. Wow. Now we're gonna go into the Tamu palette, which is called Oceans and Forests. All right, so the very first color is called Lake Blue, which looks very similar to the seaside color. Next is called Ocean. 
Very pretty. Dark turquoise is the next one. Ooh, this one looks like, oh my gosh, wow. Light viridian. It's gonna be a really dark green color, like a Kelly green. Next one is Prussian blue. Prussian blue. All right. Next one is just called Viridian. Ooh, yeah, that looks kind of like Turkish sea. Permanent green. Permanent green. Next one is tree green. Next is dark green. The next one kind of looks like it's a dupe for the algae in the Prima. Yeah, that's a dupe. That's a spot on dupe. Next one is indigo. Has a little bit, almost like a blue jean color. Last one is cobalt blue. Here is this one. Pretty darn close to this. They swatched beautifully, very opaque. Colors are within the color palette that it should be. <laughs> Not like the skin one that had the peacock and the gold neon yellow color. But anyways, uh, beautiful colors in this palette. Really a toss up. Uh, this looks like a dupe to me. It really does. Maybe with just a hint of variation, just a hint of hair. But these are pretty spot on. All of them. I think all of these look very, very spot on. The only one that wasn't, they were not able to replicate in the Temu one was this jellyfish, which is this beautiful electric blue color. That one is probably my favorite out of this whole palette. Just, it's swatched chef's kiss. But uh, these are just equally as beautiful and very, very similar in hue to this one. So this one's a toss up. I think it's gonna boil down to, again, which one you wanna spend your money on, um, but love them both. All right, so let's go ahead. I've swatched every single palette um, that could be comparable to the Prima ones from Temu. So let's go into my final thoughts. So real quickly, before I go into final thoughts, I just wanted to show you in terms of cleanup. So I'm gonna go into this color here. I'm gonna swatch it on here. I'm gonna just make a mess. There we go. I'm gonna take my other palette and I'm gonna go into the jellyfish color, which one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make a mess because this is what happens when you watercolor. Just like that. Okay, so then in terms of cleanup, you can just take a sponge, a moist sponge, and just clean it up like that. You can take a paper towel, really up to you how you wanna clean it. And if you ever need to clean your palette, you can just take the tray out and then you can just wipe it down so that you get all of the excess water after you've watercolored off of your palette so it doesn't rust or anything like that. So that's really easy to do. I don't know if over time that will rust, but since it is tin, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if it is, if there is moisture there, there may be a potential for it to rust. So I would say to avoid that at all costs, I would just remove it, wipe it down, and wipe down the individual little cakes as well. So let's go into final thoughts. So here's the final layout of all of the swatches as you saw on the video. And I have to say that the two that are winners in my book are going to be the candy. The candy from Temu, I find to be very comparable to the Pastel Dreams from Prima. And then the Oceans and Forests, I find to be very comparable to the Currents from Prima, as you can see from the swatches. So on this side, we have ones that I, I would say that they are related, but they're not identical. They all performed very well, with the exception of the Mirandi when I was comparing it to the Vintage Pastels. I just found that the colors were a little bit lackluster for me in terms of color payoff, 
and color intensity um, compared to the vintage pastels, which swatch like a dream, and you can see the opacity in a lot of them. So the Mirandi was not a hit for me. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. And then in terms of the complexion versus the skin, like I said, it really kind of depends on the exact tones that you're looking for. I find that the skin from Temu is a little bit more um, varied in terms of the colors that are in the palette versus this one, which you can see a lot of the colors look almost like sisters to each other. So I find that the Prima complexion doesn't have a lot of variety, but it really depends on the hues that you're looking for, what it boils down to. Now I do have the prices listed. Granted, the Primas I got from Amazon, so this is what the pricing is now. I don't know if that's going to change, but for the Vintage Pastels, we're looking at $20.80. For the Complexion, $21.44. The pastel dreams we have at $17.99 and the currants is at $21.95. And then the ones from Temu that come in the pan are $9.98. Now I did also see on the Temu site, and I will also link it in the description, that there is um, basically a even less expensive version of the palettes. And that comes out at $5.48. It's a smaller plastic tray. It doesn't come in a tin, so you're paying less for not getting a, a metal tin, um, but it just comes in one of those little plastic trays with the same colors, with the same amount of colors. Uh, in terms of how much grams you get in total versus the, the tins, I'm not sure, but it is a much smaller palette. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's going to be a little bit less product in that palette. But if you're just looking to try it out, you can do the $5.48 route or you can go and do the Prima. Really up to you in terms of which ones you wanna spend your money on. I hope that helps um, in terms of you actually seeing the swatches. I know it's really hard when you see a palette online and you see you know, potential swatches of what it looks like on the back, but sometimes it just doesn't always match up to what, that, what those colors actually look like. Like for instance, with the Mirandi color palette, as you can see, this looks pretty dark compared to what it came out to be. So it's not always, when you see a, a swatch set like this on the back of a palette, it's really hard to know what the exact colors are gonna end up looking like, what the quality is gonna be like. I really enjoy these review style videos. So if you wanna see more of this, I do have some more watercolor palettes that I did purchase off of Temu, which I have yet to test. So these are also potentials if you want me to do swatches of these if you're interested. Some of them are glittery, some of them are metallic, so if you want me to swatch these in a video, I would love to do that for you. Just let me know in the comments down below and what upcoming videos you would like to see or what other products that you would like me to review. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Take care!